Well, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. And this interview, I am welcoming back John Redenbow of Dream Life Decoded and Brian Palencia of Love Has a Name YouTube channel. Welcome, you guys. It's good to be here, Diana. It's good to see you again, Brian. Yes, you too. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, John. Excited. It mm -hmm. is really good to be together. Uh, and we are just kind of all three of us in the joy of the Lord right now. Um, he just kind of tickled our funny bone uh, this afternoon, and uh, we are going to enjoy doing this with you. Uh, we have a prophetic dream that Brian had, and it's entitled, Look at the Skies. So we're going to have Brian go through that dream, and then hopefully uh, we'll have something to, to uh, add to that. <laughs> I'm going to write notes while you talk, Brian, so that's why I'm looking down here. Okay, Excellent. not a problem. I'll try to be swift. <laughs> All right, Saints. Well, uh, this dream came to me on March 12th, 2024. So last week sometime. And the uh, the title of it uh, that I put to it was Cindy Jacobs tells me to look up at the stars. So I want to preface it. That wouldn't it. fit. I mean, it's a great name, but it wouldn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And I, I want to preface that I was not, you know, really thinking about Cindy Jacobs. Um, I wasn't watching any videos that I recall uh, at the time. So it's always very interesting when the Lord just drops a man or woman of God. Um, and so the dream, uh, I have it in parts here. And it began with a very faint recollection of myself, of knowing that I was in an outdoor area where there was a lot of parking uh parked cars so it was like a large parking lot it was nighttime and there was people just kind of walking out and about so it almost seemed like it was an event not just you know people rat walking to their cars or anything but just a little bit of movement something going on and this is the main uh part of the dream i noticed that there was an area where people were seated outdoors as if they were gathering to see something together um, I didn't have any idea what that was at the moment, but I re recall it was nighttime and there was something about three to four other people that I felt like I was a, a part of, like we were a team of some sort, like a spiritual team. And each of the three or four people, myself included, we had a part to play to collectively reach some sort of goal. And uh, I did not recall what that goal was. There was a moment where I had to run away in between the cars, in and out, because I knew that there were a certain uh, group of people that were chasing me, but not, uh, but basically with ill intent to do me harm. So I was able to hide between some cars, and then that part of the dream ended. Um, once I made my way back to the area with the chairs, I touched base with my team. Um, again, I don't recall seeing the people. I just I just had this knowing, had that awareness of the team being there. I mentioned something to the team about matching tops, which made me think of like polo shirts of some sorts. <laughs> um, we were not wearing them, but it almost seemed like perhaps we would be. And then I said something very positive about it. Perhaps something like saying that at least people will know we're together due to the matching tops. Then this main part, in the midst of these chairs. Now, at this point, I was standing up. Um, imagine, I guess you can almost imagine like uh, it's an outdoor area, but the chair is like in a small sanctuary of a church um, where they're all single chairs and they're all lined up together in rows. It looked something like that. All the chairs were red. Um, not a dark red, not a bright red, just red. They were plastic. And I was not facing the direction of the chairs. I was facing kind of like towards the right. Um, and then I looked and wherever I was standing, that row of chairs behind that row, I saw Cindy Jacobs. Uh, as we know, she's a powerful prophet mm -hmm. and el elder and like a general in the faith. Yes. prophet to the nations and she was there and she pointed up she pointed up so she was over here 
she pointed up in this direction. And so I turned and I looked to my left and I look up to where she was pointing. And she said something to the effect of look at the sky. It could have been stars, but kind of paints the same picture. Look at the sky. And I knew that she wanted my attention on the signs that were happening in the heavens. Now, of course, I saw like a starry night. Nothing specifically stood out to me. But within the dream, I remembered that an eclipse was coming. Okay. In the night. Mm. So at this point, even in just mentioning that right now, this tells me this was an encounter for my, for my soul to remember something in the natural. So I was, I was in another realm. So that's news to me even right now. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So that was the main part of the dream. There was two other small uh, knowings that I had regarding the dream. Didn't know in what order or where they were. But this other one was that at some point during the dream, I saw a uh, YouTuber, Troy Black, who's a believer. Uh, mm -hmm. He walks in the prophetic. And in this dream, I saw Troy Black and he spoke to Cindy Jacobs. And he said something just kind of uh, in a joking way and is very, very innocent. He says something like, we're getting older, Cindy. And then he just kind of laughed in a very friendly way. Um, I didn't feel any, any um, like it was a bad joke. I didn't feel like he said it in the wrong way. I didn't feel like Cindy took it in the wrong way. It was just mm -hmm. among friends. Um, and then there was another moment where it, it's not really solidified in me, but I recall that Cindy Jacobs, at some point, she was listing, I'm guessing this was by voice, she was listing a group of prophets, and as she was listing them in my spirit within the encounter, it's almost like I saw like a Rolodex of like, like, and it was a list of prophets that she was referring to as affirming and vouching for them as genuine. The only one that I recall was Diana Larkin was on there. So I thought that was very, very cool. Wow. Um, and that was the end of this uh, dream encounter which I will now call it. Wow. That is really interesting. Um, yeah. And just to mention, I personally have not watched Troy Black. Um, I think okay. I may have seen in the you know year or two ago, but yeah. in this season, I yeah. haven't really watched. So it was very interesting for him to be there too. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have a few thoughts, but I don't know if, if we want, John, you want to ask questions or you want to jump in? Feel well, before free. John jumps in, I just have a burning question. For sure have to know what color of polo shirts we're all going to get. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny, but I, I don't know. I I didn't sense that. But I okay, think very, okay. I think it's very... This color right here. <laughs> it's a nice color. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. My only other question before uh, John jumps in would be, the bad guys that were chasing you, were they just other people at the event or were they from outside the event? That was a good question. Um, I don't really, I don't recall enough to where I, I felt like the need to write it down. But I do want to say they were, it's almost like they wanted to interfere with what I needed to be involved in. Okay. So at the very okay. minimum, I, I know it was, they were against whatever the uh the purpose was maybe okay. perhaps me being in the midst of the chairs and hearing from the message from the lord from Cindy jacobs or whatnot mm -hmm. um definitely of, of the of the enemy because he wanted to interfere maybe chase me away from the area perhaps mm -hmm. or who knows if they wanted to jump me or whatnot i don't know <laughs> <laughs> mm. all right wow. john you want to jump in or sure i can or Brian, okay. if you wanted to share yours i mean either way I only have a few, a few things that really, really stood out to me. Um, the What I thought was really cool was um, Cindy Jacobs representing the seasoned prophets. We're talking mm -hmm. decades upon decades. Oh, yeah. Um, and she has been sent to nations to speak to presidents and prime ministers mm -hmm. and just, just amazing. I'm just truly, truly, um, it's truly an honor. And then we see... Well, I'm in the I'm in the middle of that, just kind of experiencing it. Then we hear of her affirming Diana Larkin, which I think is a blessing and an honor as well. Yeah. And then we see Troy Black, who, regardless of myself listening to or not listening to Cindy or Troy Black in this season, it, you have a, a the young and the older generation. 
and the red chairs at least to me speaks of the prophetic mm -hmm. um i think of red as the anointing uh it makes mm -hmm. me think of isaiah 11 2 where the lord speaks of the seven spirits of god and how i heard one amazing teaching from neville johnson about the seven colors of the rainbow going in line with mm -hmm. the seven spirits of god yeah. and that very very first one is the spirit of the lord and it was interesting because when the Lord Jesus himself says the spirit of the Lord is upon me, it's like the ministry uh, was like coming forth and he began to like prophesy and so forth. So it makes mm -hmm. me think of the prophetic. And so all the seats being there, it was like a gathering of, of his prophets, prophetic people. And even though it, I didn't have a complete sense of why we, we were there together, we could mm -hmm. almost, we could almost assume Cindy Jacobs direction would make sense because everybody was sitting the chairs were all facing the same way and she pointed to me and though i didn't see other people it seemed like the lord saying calling his prophets and prophetic people pay attention to what's happening because this obviously is not just any eclipse uh, at least that's what i thought because that's how it tied in in the dream so uh, that's the main thing that stood out to me wow you know really interesting just um just to be candid and give a little background. Um, I'm home taking care of my mom and dad because my mom had surgery and stuff. And so most of my days have been filled with, like I was supposed to go grocery shopping today and I needed to go get the stuff so I could cook the pot roast. And then by the time we were done with lunch, it was two and I'm like, oh, I got to cook it for five hours. Wow, we're not having pot roast tonight. And <laughs> it's just been that kind of a day. And so I decided, okay, we have some frozen chili. I'm going to pull out. We're going to warm that up tonight. And, you know, I'm going to go have dinner with a friend. And it was just like, okay. Um, <clears throat> so I had like an hour and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go upstairs and lay down. And I saw somebody called and I, I called them and we were talking and we started talking about the eclipse. And, <laughs> and I've heard, um, you know, some people have reached out Um and, and said, what do you think? And, you know, we believe this and here's a, you know, a presentation or we, you know, here's some research that we've done. What is, what are your thoughts? And I haven't felt really a sense of urgency on this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I was sharing this with a friend of mine, how people are looking at, you know, well, there were seven Salem's seven years ago, and then there's seven Nineveh's and there were, yeah. You know, and I'm like, sometimes God works in code, like with anagrams, where you could take all the letters of Salem and reshuffle them and they spell something else. And I'm like, they could spell meals, <laughs> you know, and I'm in <laughs> grocery shopping mode and meal making mode, but I'm like, they could also spell lames, L-A-M-E-S. <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm just like, mm. I'm just not feeling like the world's going to end. No, first week in April, right. and, and it runs the gamut from like cataclysmic, everybody needs to repent, or this is going to happen, to there's going to be a huge blessing on America, and and um, so it's it's really interesting that you know, and, and it was during that, so I have this phone call, I pull up my phone, and I thought, well, I'm just going to lay down for an hour or so, and I check my email, and there's an email from Diana. <laughs> and she said, I don't know if you saw the email from Brian. And I'm like, I missed an email from Brian. And I'm like, oh, they want to do an interview. I'm like, well, that's like in an hour and a half. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I have dinner at 630. I got to leave at six. I got this. I got that. You know, I'm like, I could do 45 minutes or so around five o'clock. But it was just interesting how like, if anything else would have been different today, if I was cooking the pot roast or if this was happening or that was happening or I'd been grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. I would have totally been out of pocket, but I had this hour and a half that I was going to like take a nap. So I got like a half an hour nap and then I'm boom, here I am. And then I'm immediately serve up dinner for mom and dad and out the door. And so, but as I looked up your email, I saw that you had it attached and I clicked, I clicked on it and I'm like, God, do I need to read this right now? And he goes, no, don't read it in advance. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, as you know, as we've done before, I end up going into to these dreams cold mm -hmm. and it's just fun because the Holy Spirit speaks to me. It's fresh. It's not like, yeah. 
mulling yeah. it over. And it's also good because I feel like a lot of times you can be in that revelatory mode easier mm -hmm. than if you're trying to go into your brain and think like, well, how does this yeah. make sense? And, yeah. you know, so, so I really enjoy the fact that we're here um, because again, two hours ago, I would not have seen this coming today. <laughs> so I feel like it's definitely one of those, those God things. Um, I got to say, I did not plan to email you just so the viewers know that was just out of nowhere. I said, I, I think I'll just send the John, the, you know, the dream in advance. Um, so, you know, thanks a lot, Lord, just using me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think we just tap into one another's uh, flow when you were saying that, how the revelatory comes in and that's what just jumped out at me i said well i can see that because when i hear other people talk about the lord about something i'll start getting new revelation as they're speaking mm -hmm. so uh, just thought i'd voice that you know for the viewers so they can also learn and, and watch for that in their lives yeah like the divine appointments and the divine unctions like if you live a prophetic lifestyle just be just keep a soft heart and an open schedule yes. and say yes <laughs> and yes. stuff like this yeah, happens. Much. So who knows what God's going to do today, but I'm excited. Wow. Amen. So cool. <laughs> so I got to tell you a quick story. Um, okay. A really good friend of mine who um, who uh, is, is a guy that I know in, in Texas, um, <clears throat> politically very active, active in ministry and all of that, um, had a dream. And I've done multiple dreams for this person. And he had a dream about Cindy Jacobs during 2020. And this was the whole COVID thing and all that. And uh, I was living in Dallas at the time. He lived down near Waco. And so I drove down. He was an old school kind of guy. So he liked to have paper. You know, it's not, don't email me. <laughs> like, so I would go down. I would brief him in person. Mm -hmm. Here's your dream. Here's what it means. And this dream in particular was about Cindy Jacobs. And <clears throat> so as I did this dream, um, we get done and he goes, you need to brief Cindy. And I said, well, I'm not trying to kick open any door at all. Like if God provides the opportunity, he goes, she's having a thing tonight. They're going to be live on God TV, praying over the coronavirus. It's right on your way back in South Dallas. You live in North Dallas. I'm down here. Why don't you, you know, I can call ahead and I'm like, you don't need to try to make anything happen. I'll stop by the meeting. And if God wants me there, then great. And so I stopped by, I got to the meeting a little bit early. It was like 15 minutes, 20 minutes prior. And so I'm doing what I always do. I got my laptop, but I'm working on a dream in the lobby. And I see this usher. He's just kind of looking at me out of the corner of his eye. He finally comes <laughs> over and he goes, he goes, Oh, you need to be in the green room back here. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not part of leadership. I'm not a speaker. I'm not part of it. And he cuts me off and he goes, you need to be in the green room. Come with me. And I'm like, I've no idea who this guy was. I walk in the green room now. I, Besides I, an angel. Cindy. Yeah, I know. Right. I've met Cindy <laughs> before and I knew probably at least half of the people in the green room just from you know, I'm not a speaker at prophetic conferences. I've just been around for a while. I guess you, you're around long enough and you build relationships, you know, but I've been primarily a business guy. I know people think I'm a ministry person. I don't even really see myself as a ministry, but I've always been a business guy. But I walk in and Cindy looks at me and she goes, oh, I know you. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> so we, we had the meeting and then afterwards, um, Everybody left. And then my friend called and said, oh, hey, Cindy wanted to invite you to dinner with everybody that was at the meeting and go to this restaurant. And so I went and so I had this presentation and I was briefing Cindy. But I say all that to say wow. um, it was something about being in the Philippines. And when I heard Cindy Jacobs in the Philippines, what I heard was General MacArthur returns. And so I got the picture of General MacArthur stepping off the boat into Luzon in the Philippines. And it's that famous picture. And so I show her and I said, I just felt like in this dream, you go to the Philippines, there's a really important reason you go to the Philippines. And, and mm -hmm. she just stops and she looks me dead in my eyes and she goes, do you know the name of my ministry? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't. And she's like, it's Generals and International. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea. But when you said Cindy Jacobs, that's the memory that comes to mind. Wow. Like, Generals International. So I feel like what God is saying is Cindy Jacobs, as you've said as well, is a general. 
She's mm-hmm. a general in the prophetic. I've heard somewhere, and I don't, it's not my statement, but I heard somebody else say, I think she's the person alive that's been in front of or given prophetic words to the most heads of state wow. that's mm-hmm. living currently today. Um, <clears throat> and so definitely is known and respected um, in in prophetic circles and all of that. And so I hear general, that's what I hear for Cindy. And I got that at the title when you said Cindy Jacobs, you know, tells us to look at the skies. So I think that's really <clears throat> an interesting part. Also the date 3-1-2-12 or it's 3 12 24. So there's the three and of course three times four is 12 and then double 12 is 24. And I think that's interesting, but I also noticed the three twelve is one two three, in a different sequence. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I don't buy into numbers always mean you know five is always great and five, you know, I, I just what we teach is just hear from the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. look at it. What impression does it give? Sometimes I look at a date and God says, what's the third book of the Bible, the 12th chapter, the 24 verse, hmm. you know? So sometimes it's, and, and they call that an Ottendorf cipher. It's an actual thing you use in intelligence. Um, you, you have to have the same book, but if you're looking at it as the Bible, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, what's Leviticus 12, 24? I don't have any idea what it is, but sometimes God will say, go that direction. Other times he does alphanumeric codes, but I just thought that it was interesting as I saw it as 3, 12 or 3, 1, 2, and then 24. And instead of 1, 2, 3, it's 3, 1, 2. And so I feel like what God is saying is <clears throat> there's a almost like a jumble of the schedule. And what I'm hearing is, and we've heard this before, that the enemy of righteousness and justice in the earth is trying to speed up time. They're trying to put things ahead and make mm-hmm. things happen before they're set time to happen. And I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like what's happening, particularly r- related to there's so much coming out about the eclipse and all these things that, you know, and again, it runs the gamut of it's going to be the end of the world to it's going to be the rapture to America's going to be blessed to it's going to be judgment on, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know that there's a clear mm-hmm. sound in the prophetic right now. Yeah. Almost across the board, but particularly related to the idea of the eclipse. And so, like I said, I was just talking to my friend and I'm like, not really feeling a sense of urgency. And, and honestly, it kind of feels like Y2K. It feels like there could be a big buildup and then it could be a massive mm-hmm. nothing burger. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and we, he mentioned the blood moons. I mean, like people wrote books on the oh my goodness. blood moons. And yes. I don't know if I can remember anything significant that happened at all geopolitically during that time that we thought, you know, oh, this is this and this mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I just say all that to, to say, as I go through this, um, I think the setting is really interesting. The fact that it's night is a time of darkness. I do think we're in a dark time. I think, I don't think the word of the Lord is rare. Like it said in the Bible, the word of the Lord mm-hmm. is rare in those days. I don't think that's the case that we're in. I think actually there's an outpouring of the word of the Lord. I think the discernment is rare. And mm-hmm. I think the interpretation is rare. And so, like I say, I feel like a lot of times there's so many different voices that are like, you could pick which lane. You, are we going with full on, full on judgment today? Or are we going with blessing? Like you got a word for whatever fits your fancy. And it's almost like, mm. you're like CNN or Fox, just pick your prophet and go with that. <laughs> and, and it feels like kind of dangerous though, because yeah. it's like, yeah. but what is the true sound? Distracting. Like, it's distracting. Yeah. And what is God's opinion? I don't care about my opinion. I don't care what yeah. I like. I don't care who I jive with. I don't <laughs> care if the, the guy's the most offensive prophet that I can't stand listening to at all. If he carries the word of the Lord and the truth, that's the person I want to be listening to. Like yeah. the word's supposed to cut at times, right? So I'm like, God, what's mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. what's the true sound? But yeah, that's just my thoughts. That doesn't mean that that's where everybody is. And it certainly doesn't mean that that's where the prophetic community as a whole is. Now, I see more than most because we look at everybody that's talking about prophetic words and dreams. And so we're looking at a gamut of like 65 people okay. pulling in what they're saying. And we're just like, wow, you know, and some of it feels like there's a lot of opinions 
Mm -hmm. And that's why there's like this disunity. And in some of it, it's like, well, could everybody be right? And then it's like, no, no, not everybody's right. And and, then that's okay. (laughs) You know? Um, So I see this, by the way, as the parking lot. Mm -hmm. What I just described is the parking lot. Um, When you look at a, first of all, I don't believe a car is a vehicle is, is ministry all the time. You know, the people that say that, they're all in ministry. (laughs) To me, what it means is like a vehicle to destiny or what drives you or how you get there or Mm -hmm. where you're going or whatever. So if you're in a car that's not moving, it's like a stalled destiny. Yes. Now, and it could be parked. And and what I hear is, because at first I'm like, oh, parking lots, I, you know, parking lot dreams are like, they're almost like God saying, these are people that are not moving forward in their destiny. And (laughs) But what I heard was parked, but ready Uh, because again, you're at an event. So it's not like they're in the back of a junkyard sitting there for a hundred years. It's like they drove to this event. They're sitting together in a prophetic community, looking to see the signs from heaven. And then they're going to go somewhere and do something about it, you know, Mm -hmm. figuratively in the dream. So parked, but ready. So I'm like, okay, I like that. Um, Destiny awaits was also what I heard uh, for the parking lot. And again, in a dark time and the dark is, it's just hard to see in the dark, you know, thy Mm -hmm. words are lamp to my feet and a light into my path. So what, what's rare is the discernment and the interpretation, not the voice of the Lord. I feel like God is speaking, but being able to discern what he's saying. And I feel like God is moving this next generation of the prophetic. I call it the era of spiritual intelligence. It's about, and we've talked about this a little bit before, it's about this, the coin and it's about people coming together and saying, let's hear from, you know, the company of prophets, let's hear together, you know, and this is a scriptural concept. There's people that argue against, no, there was the man of power for the hour and Nathan was the only one that approached David and, you know, (laughs) but you can look at it and you can see when Saul went out and prophesied, he was with a group of prophets the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Joel 2 and Acts 2 is your sons mm-hmm. and daughters, yes. which I, I feel like that verse is almost a condemnation on the cessationists that say women don't have a place or a voice. Yeah. You know, it's Old Testament, it's New Testament, it survived the new covenant gap, people, like you can't get away from it. Your sons <laughs> and daughters will prophesy. So if you're seeing a woman prophet mm-hmm. and you have a problem with it, the problem is yours, I assure you. <laughs> you know, but so that's like the era that we're in, sons and daughters, right? It's a group of people. And <clears throat> they're at this event, like you said, waiting on the Lord. Like they went to this event specifically to sit in a chair in the middle of a field or wherever they are to look and to see what needed to be seen. Were they going to a concert and then Cindy said, look up, or were they going to watch the eclipse? Do you you have a feeling of that? Uh, No, it didn't seem like a concert or anything worldly or a movie or anything. Uh, It was just chairs. Um, And then the only other connection I made was what Cindy said. So it made me feel like those chairs are to be filled with the people gathering for for that thing to look at the sky, look yeah. at the stars and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I also think it was interesting that when you were chased, you ran through the parking lot. Um, <laughs> in all humility, if you're on Twitter and you're watching what's been happening in light of what's happened at certain ministries in light of honestly people with the microphone saying just some dumb stuff that then they've had to apologize that then another person jumps in and hammers them. And then they're like, well, this and this, and then like, no, you don't get to play the victim. And there's this stuff back and forth right now that's happening. If you're not seeing any of that, great. Don't, don't go, don't get on Twitter, but (laughs) If you're aware of some of this and it's bridging the gas, multiple ministries involved, there's multiple reputable voices and it's just like this strife. And there's a couple people that have come out and tried to say, Hey guys, knock it off. And then they feels like they're tone deaf to other situations because other people are expressing trauma and pain. And, 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 and so that's kind of what I feel like somebody came after you and you ran through the parking lot. And I feel like um, 
there certainly needs to be exposure and accountability. I feel like it's happening in the prayer movement. I feel like it's happening mm -hmm. um, in the prophetic movement. I feel like we've barely, barely, barely begun to see the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And multiple people, I think Amanda Grace just had a word about a massive church or ministry that's going to have something really, really big that's going to come out. <clears throat> and I think what we're seeing is a lot of people that have the microphones that we've put on pedestals um, that God is just like, I'm not sharing my glory with anybody. And then I think on the other end of that, that's kind of the light verse. And on the other end of that is there are literally really bad people, wolves mm -hmm. that are there designed to take advantage, to tear things down and God yes. is going to out them and they're going to be gone and probably um, have to face the judgment of God on their own. Yeah, But it leaves people wondering what was real and what wasn't real. And, and it, what about prophecy? What about this movement? What mm -hmm. about the worship movement? And the, you know, yeah. and, and what I feel like is there's been destinies that have been parked, particularly because of disillusionment, mm -hmm. of devolution of certain um, movements, things like that, of some of the infighting where they've just been like, you know what, I'm just going to be quiet and I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to get into the fray. And I appreciate that people don't want to mix it up. Families mix it up every now and then. So I think some of that is healthy, but I think if 90% of what we're doing is backbiting or justifying or defending our own position or whatever, yeah. um, <clears throat> we got to look at that and see like, why did God give us a voice and what are we a voice to be? And I can tell you, number one, the person that has the biggest battle with that is me <laughs> because I see stuff on Twitter and I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? I need to get on my, and God is like, you are not sheriff of the kingdom. Oh, but I, oh, I okay. All right. Put the phone down, walk away. You know, and there's so many things that I'm just like, did you see this God? Did you see what they just said? <laughs> oh. And God is like, you know what? Not really your area. Um, Stay in your lane, do what I've called you to do. And, and the thing is, is when we don't stay in our lane, then what we do is we put the car in park yeah. to now send a tweet, to now correct mm. somebody we're not called to correct in mm. probably another part of the body that we don't have authority or reign over. Mm. You know, I'm not the head of the worship movement or the prayer movement or the this or that, and <laughs> not really the head of any movement. I'm pioneering mm. some things in spiritual mm. intelligence. And so that's it. So how about I just keep doing stuff like this and keep when people say, Hey, we have a dream. What are your thoughts instead of getting into that? And so that's the whole scene in a nutshell of somebody's chasing you and you're running through parked cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I think I said enough there. Um, so I'm just going to move on. The shirt, the shirts is like mantles. Hmm. Um, the idea of sitting together with a group of people discussing shirts. And I love the idea that you've said polo because it's the collared shirt, but it's also a knit pullover shirt. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like a mullet, you know, <laughs> business in front party in the back. It's kind of like a, it has a T-shirt feel to it because it's very comfortable, but it has the collar. So it's like kind of businessy. You know, and so I feel like it's a combination of business and fun. It's casual, it's relaxed, but it can also be in the right setting. I mean, you can wear a jacket with a polo, you know, and still look really, really good at an event or whatever. And so I feel like it's 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 all of that, but I feel like it represents like mantles and the idea of wanting to come together in in unity and being recognized as of the same mm -hmm. tribe. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Red chairs. I loved what you were saying about red, but what I heard was well read. And in other words, they're reading the AP wire of heaven. Wow. These are people like the three of us who are like, we want to know what is God saying? And there are other people yes. that are doing a lot of other things and they're probably studying a lot of other things what we kind of geek out on is dreams, you know, and we talk about, Hey, did you see what this person said? Or, Hey, what about this video? Or, Hey, the eclipse and Hey, and you know, my life is spent in conversations. Like, did you see the latest dream out of here? And Hey, what about this? And what are your thoughts? on? Oh, Hey, I had a dream. And 
you know, and so <clears throat> I feel like those of us that are in that position, whether we're dreamers, we're dream interpreters, we're in, you know, pioneering the movement of spiritual intelligence, which I believe is the new movement that's on the forefront of the prophetic right now. We are reading the messages from heaven that are coming down day in and day out. And not everybody has the opportunity to do that. But, you know, you got Diana Larkin, who's, you know, <laughs> saying her stuff. And you got so many other people that and, and somebody said, hey, did you see the latest whoever video? And I'm like, no, I'm like 10 videos behind right now because I'm in <laughs> caretaker mode. But I stayed up to like two in the morning watching one. <laughs> And I've learned if I wait until the video comes out and then I go back and I watch it at two, two times speed, I can get through two of them in the time it takes to get through one. But, but so that's what I felt about the red chairs. Yes. Um, also a chair is a seat, which mm -hmm. means it's a position of authority. You know, it's also a place of rest. Mm -hmm. So reading the messages from heaven in a position of authority, in a place of rest, you're not striving if you're sitting down. You're not fighting. You're not being chased. You're not running through people who aren't going anywhere. In the parked mm -hmm. car situation, you're seated among friends with like mantles, mantles, looking up and reading kind of the AP wire. What is heaven saying? Uh, and it's at that place that the general or one of the generals, Cindy Jacobs says, look up, mm -hmm. you know look at the sky. <clears throat> and I think it's just, I think it's really interesting about two and a half, three years ago, when we really started training in earnest with the spiritual intelligence mentorship and, and, and um, doing all of that. One of our students came to us and said, what do you think about astronomy? Not astrology, but what no. about the constellations? And yeah. what about, you know, Jupiter and retrograde. And I'm just like, and I was, you know, I, my tendency was to back away a little bit. And then I'm like, you know what? There are signs in the heavens, the wise men, the, like, these were the go-to people before Daniel or Joseph were brought in, they went to the astrologers, That's right? you know? And so I think there is a level of spiritual intelligence in that, but it's not what the enemy took and turned into this horoscope, witchcraft, signs, mm -hmm. but there's a level of truth in that because God created it and the heavens will tell the glory of God. Yes. And so I think it's, it's, it's Absolutely. interesting. I don't know that I've seen anybody really explore that in my knowledge, really explore that super well from a Christian, completely Bible-based, Holy Spirit-filled worldview. Actually, I do have someone on my telegram. Really? Her name is Joanne. And she has, at God's direction, she has just dived into this. She comes up with detailed charts of like things that are conjuncting and, you know, just when certain things happen, how things were arranged in the sky. And it's pretty amazing. That's incredible. I, yeah. Wasn't it June 24th of 2022 when like all the planets were in alignment? I remember because it was my birthday, but that was also oh, the day okay. that they reversed Roe versus Wade. Ah, I can have and, her and again, look it I up. It's certainly not my area, and I'm happy to plead ignorance on it because yeah. Oh, I don't not have the time. You know, it's deep research. It really is. So, but I I do. I think um, I'm reading a book about who were the older ladies in California, the golden lampstands or something. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> there was oh, yeah. no, I don't. I can't remember the right wording, but ladies of the no of the light. Yeah. Anyway, got, let me look up this book real quick because I'm okay. reading it right now. Uh, ladies of Gold. Ah, was James okay. Maloney. And it's about okay. a group of older women who they have these incredible visitations, transportation, wow. having all this stuff. And and one of them talks about, I think it's the 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 person that work with James talks about how she ran across these verses that heaven declares the glory of God. And she really loved the stars. Mm -hmm. And so God began to speak to her about signs in the heavens. Yes. Again, not my area. Happy if God opens that up to me. Um, yeah. But I think there's a whole lot of amateur people that are doing that now, especially <laughs> when an eclipse happens. And, and we saw the same thing during the blood mood times. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I, I, God has been saying over and over, and I keep kind of championing this thought lately, which is abandon yourself to the journey of discovery. Uh, so like put all that. your pre, you know, conceived notions, press into the word. What is God saying? Yes. And when people are doing this, so I'm, I'm happy that people are doing that. Um, <clears throat> and I did see what you said, the Troy Black um, and the Diana Larkin. Um, you know, the kind of new YouTube prophet. I feel, I feel like Troy is a, a lot more on the polished side than I am, like on how he does his marketing and how his thumbnails are created. And, you know, it seems really kind of polished from a marketing perspective. Um, I don't, I don't listen to him a lot. Um, but then I look at a Diana Larkin who, you know, just turns the video on and we start talking. <laughs> That's all I know how to do, folks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. And uh, and it is a voice of seasoning and a voice of uh of of really measured and careful to spend time in the presence and to hear from the Lord. And so I think it's interesting because in the midst of kind of some of the backbiting and the parked cars, in the midst of a company emerging. And they're emerging because they're talking about, should we get shirts? So it's kind of a relatively new group. They're outside, which means outside the four walls, outside the box. They're in red chairs. They have a seat of authority. Um, they're <clears throat> waiting to hear what heaven is going to say. You have a general that stands up or, or sits or whatever and says, look at the sky. And that becomes almost like an assignment. And then in the midst of that, you see... Um, and it's interesting, I, I forgot about this part that while well, we're getting older, aren't we, Cindy? And to me, what that means is we're maturing or we're seasoned. Yes. yes. Another way to say that is we're becoming more like Diana Larkin. <laughs> you know, not that you're, <laughs> you're you're older, you're not old, but it's just that somebody is, you know, you've been around and you've seen a lot and you're not in it for what of, you know, I, I don't want to discourage anybody. I'm, I'm glad when these new young voices arise, but... <laughs> Can we get away from the clickbait and the prophetic, like <laughs> urgent dream? Amen, brother. And, you know, dissolves <laughs> in the midst of a shooting star. Like, guys, come on. You know, <clears throat> so I love the season. I'm actually more attracted to the seasoned voices that are saying things than the AI videos and the pictures of calamity constantly. Mm. And that's what I feel like the younger generation is. But it's interesting, you know, God addressed this again in Joel 2 and Acts 2. Your young men will see visions. Your old mm -hmm. men will dream dreams. And I always ask God, why old men? And it's because they have more life experience and they mm -hmm. have more for God to paint with a broader brush. They know more history. They've heard more songs. Okay. They've seen more movies. They've lived through more. And so God can talk <laughs> about the Reagan era or the JFK era or World War II and a, a generation Xer isn't even going to know most of those references at all. You know, some of these people don't even yeah. remember nine 11, you know, yep. so it's like, it's true. And, but it's a mix of God is still speaking. There's no junior Holy spirit for 12 year olds mm -hmm. or 16 year olds or 20 something year olds or millennials or Gen Z or Gen X or whatever. And so I think it's interesting because in the midst of this, <clears throat> in the midst of, God is like, I, I feel like this is God showing us where the prophetic is at right now. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a little drama over here. There's some people that are probably not where they're supposed to be, um, but their destiny still awaits them. They're probably not really moving forward. They're kind of stuck on a sidebar conversation. Um, <clears throat> but then there's a company and it's not a lot. It's not everybody. There's a few that are sitting in red chairs, looking up talking about like mantles and a general comes in and says well, look at the sky and in the midst of that you have the younger generation and you have the older generation but one last thing is the idea of the rolodex and the rolodex i mean i just hear you know god speaks movie and so i hear ghostbusters who are you going to call you know and this is the perfect situation it's like if there's something that's going to happen where I feel like there isn't really a clear sound in the prophetic. I feel like we're wildly different on what's going to happen, whether judgment in America or blessing over the nations, like completely opposite ends. Who are you going to call to get a clear voice from God? 
and the general mentions Diana Larkin, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome because I think this stream is a lot yeah. of you, Brian. It's a lot about identity. It's a lot about destiny. It's a lot about the circles that you'll be in, how to kind of avoid some of the mind the, the the mindless traps of getting into sidebar conversations and being chased and you know having a few haters you know what we, we all know we can't answer everybody that wants to get on and just tell us that God doesn't exist you know <laughs> but also know that you're seated amongst those that are well read um so part of this is an identity and a destiny dream for you but part of it I believe is also calling out um obviously your close friend Diana Larkin. And I feel like it's, again, if you view dreams like I do, that dreams are 100% messages from God. And if you were God, not that we are, but if you had to create a movie message for someone and you had to cast every part, yeah. why would you pick, if God uses Diana Larkin in a dream not to Diana Larkin and you have Cindy Jacobs one of the most respected and you know and i've heard this out of the mouth that's not my words cuz i don't i don't know enough about those circles but i've heard this out of the mouth of other prophets that you know she's heads of state you know all of these things um and if that's the position that she has and as a general out of her mouth while in the midst of other prophetic voices she talks about a Rolodex and she mentions Diana Larkin. What did she say about Diana? Um, it wasn't, it was more like a knowing. It was more like, I just knew at some point she was uh, sh listing, um, vouching for prophetic voices that could be trusted. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yes, aff affirming them. And the only one that I remember, if I can say the Lord allowed me to remember, the only one was Diana Larkin mm. that, that I recall uh, being pointed out to me. Well, I think that's interesting. I also think it could be prophetic. It could be prophetic. Do you know Cindy Jacobs, Diana? No. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm well aware of her ministry and kind of touched it all through the years, but she's not someone that I follow all the time. Yeah. But have great respect for. So for somebody to kind of endorse you, especially in a position that she is, I feel like there either needs to be a level of knowingness, meaning either she's watching, she's aware of you and she's watching some of the things that you're putting out and or there's a relationship, which just could be future prophetic. Mm -hmm. God could be saying you develop a relationship with with Cindy Jacobs. Again, I don't know Cindy real well on um, the times I've spent with her have been um, you know, with a group of other, kind of like in the setting, you know, a group of other people, you know, a green room or this or that. Um, but I feel like she would really enjoy you mm -hmm. and your, this, the sweetness of your spirit and the humility that you walk in and the measure of the word and how, you know, you weep over the things in the nation and you really want to, you know, you're, you're not trying to run a church. You're not trying to get a name. You're just trying to be obedient. Yeah. and say, God, what's my role in this season? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, I feel like this is like God is letting you know that you got it right. Wow. And I, I don't know what that means to you because I don't know what questions you've had of him or anything else, but I feel like there's an identity and destiny part and as well as a, how to navigate things for Brian. Mm -hmm. I think there's a piece in it for everybody, which is Maybe we should pay attention to the eclipse and what's happening, not just the eclipse, because she didn't say the eclipse. She said, look at the skies. Mm -hmm. So that may be a direct word for somebody that's listening, but it may also be like, maybe we should put that into kind of the prophetic mix a little bit more. Um, but then also the idea of the coming together and the trusted few, and you're among the trusted few in her Rolodex. Um which when you said Cindy Jacobs, I also, a lot of times God will use initials and I heard CJ. And of course, in an anagram, when you change the letters around, CJ is JC backwards, huh. you know? And so there was just like, wow, that's interesting that God would use somebody with those initials. 
And again, I, it's not like I sit and try to think, well, how could we, you know, it just like, bam. And I'm like, I never would have thought that Cindy Jacobs could represent Christ in a dream, but that's what I saw was chase, wow. you know? So I, I just, I don't think we can, it would be challenging to overemphasize the importance for you, Diana, of what this dream means, mm -hmm. especially how it came together and how we're here on this call, which again, <laughs> two hours ago, I don't think any of us saw this coming. And here we are. <laughs> and so I, I, I think this is a very, very strong from arguably, and I, I'm happy to be wrong in this, but from arguably the most senior and certainly most senior female head of state prophet potentially alive in our era today mm -hmm. for God to show you in her Rolodex as trusted mm -hmm. among, and she, she puts together a worldwide conference for Congress for prophets yeah. every year. And they, people come mm -hmm. from all over the world and they get together for like a week and they just have round tables and they hear the voice of God and they, they all this stuff. And then they open it up for a conference where anybody can come in. And, and so she probably knows a whole lot of people mm -hmm. in the prophetic and probably one of the most knowledgeable and most, most networked people because of that position in the Congress that she puts on yearly, I would think she would be one of the most reputable people to ask who could we trust in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you're the name that Brian sees in her Rolodex, again, I think there may be a relationship in the future. Mm -hmm. um, if it resonates, it might even be something you need to reach out. It might be something that God just makes happen. Um, but I do think that this is um, this is definitely like a God kiss for you. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I'm proud of you. You're recognized by generals. You mm -hmm. probably don't have any idea the people that are listening to mm -hmm. what you're doing mm -hmm. out of obedience day in and day out, but it's important. It matters. And you're amongst those who see, but not only see, but can see and are trusted, not only can see and are trusted, but can see and are trusted and are called upon mm -hmm. because you're in the Rolodex. Wow. Wow. That's uh. Oof. You just hit me there. Um, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> I don't know if you know, John, but Oof. at the end of my videos, I show the photos that people are sending in to me because wow. I began to talk about signs and wonders in the heavens and in the skies and that God was speaking to us and showing us things. And yeah, so I I have like 200 photos backed up you know, and I'll show like 70 for every video um, because they just pour in. People are looking up and they are recognizing God is speaking to them. Mm. So it's been precious. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> I got to go watch now. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting in light of what Cindy said, look up. Like it is, I, you know, I never even wow. put that together until you said that. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> sure is. Brian, what are you thinking there? <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I feel like I'm partaking in, in the touch of the Lord for you on your behalf. Um, because as, uh, and without being the one to initiate certain things, I know that uh, there's been a few times in the past few weeks that certain, you know, viewers will comment things and, and they're not very nice um, that you that we've kind of talked about. And it just in in my walk, in my short, few short years, in times when stuff like that has happened with me within a few weeks or so, maybe a day, uh, a couple days, I'll have a dream from the Lord where it's like, he comes and he affirms you and he encourages you. Mm. And it's just like, 
all that that people were doing to to speak against you or or insult you or whatnot it's just like like vapor it just it just doesn't even bother you and so i i see this as really really special and and i know we we talked offline um about a certain aspect to that which mm -hmm. is mind-blowing to, to hear all this so it's it's absolutely beautiful and i think that you know if people only knew that the lord loves every one of us like that way um i mean god has no favorites but yet he can make you feel like you're his favorite mm -hmm. yet it's the same across the board <laughs> and it's just it's just awesome so uh again and and the lord pulled john in here he just kind of used me unexpectedly and <laughs> it came it came to pass and and the lord is encouraging you and so i think that's awesome uh just to hear and to witness yeah i do too that's amazing i'll just throw this in uh just to talk about the eclipse again and i definitely think we need to pray that the enemy doesn't come in and try to pull some of the things that I'm sure they have planned. But I it's just like I don't it's just like poof. I don't think it's gonna do anything. And everybody's all stirred up about all the Ninevehs, you know, judgment, God's judgment. Mm -hmm. But it's like that's not the story of Nineveh. The story of Nineveh is repentance. God pours his mercy and he saves. You know, that's that's the message of Nineveh. Mm. So true. Yeah. Johnny Enlow was actually uh, talking about that Monday on Elijah's dreams. And I just, yeah, my spirit just went, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is it. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Johnny had some, some great things. Um, in fact, I took a screenshot. Uh, I thought it would be something great to share uh, that the Lord revealed to Johnny which is a great reminder, um, even though, you know, some are focused on the judgment and we know it has a lot to do with, I guess, how um, seasoned or, or new and whatnot. And, and I love that Johnny, the Lord led him to speak on, you know, why is it that people feel like there's this sort of like pride to speak judgment? Like, mm -hmm. what is that? They don't, they don't see it. They see it as very, very pious you know, like they're a, yeah. a voice of the Lord and God revealed to them and he showed them the tribulation and the rapture and this and that, this and that. And I can look back to my past and I could see like, oh man, I was really misinterpreting those dreams. Not that I've, you know, not that I'm the best or anything like that. And I've grown and I'm still growing. Yeah. Um, but I realized just because God shows you something doesn't mean you start going and announcing that it is like literally it's going to happen. Um and and this is something that Johnny uh, Johnny Enlo said. He said, uh, "Notice in Jonah chapter four, verse eleven, uh, NLT version. He says, but Nineveh has more than one hundred and twenty thousand people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Mm -hmm. So even in that, the redemption is always a foundational line. It's always a thread." Um, I heard Patricia King um, last year, I was reviewing some videos I had on my phone and she was mentioning that again, redemption. God always has a redemptive plan. He's not out mm -hmm. to get us. He's not out to to judge us and destroy us. His, everything he does is out of love. Mm -hmm. And so as Diana was saying, Nineveh, repentance, well, the Lord wants to, you know, I used to think as well, uh, back to the first eclipse of 2017, I said, oh man, an ex over America, that's it rapture time and i was there i was there so i like to mention and remind people that because the lord was the only one who pulled me out of that and yeah. i didn't realize i was in it so i i get it where people mm -hmm. are at but i can't i have i still have to correct in love and to help them see hey you know god god has plans and there are things that haven't happened so he can't just you know void his word and just take us out because yeah we're scared and we mm -hmm. don't want to admit it that's a hard reality there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but I just, I feel like I see the X as, as not as a negative, but as a positive. So uh, yeah. I don't know if we want to, if we want to transition. So I'll hold back on that, but. No, that's fine. I think we can. I think John did an amazing job on that dream. Unless there's anything you had a question about. 
No, no, that was that was great. Anything well, else that's... John wants to add? I'm, I'm all ears. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> Go ahead and share okay. what your insights um, have been. Okay, so I, um, I've been catching up, you know, a little bit here and there, listening to different people, and I've noticed that a couple of uh, servants of God have come up and said, "I hadn't received anything until the Lord gave me this dream," and mm -hmm. another one being Wanda Alder. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, Diana, you said the Lord spoke to you about mm -hmm. it but beforehand it seemed like he hadn't really emphasized nope. it mm -mm. um i had a i had two really odd dreams that kind of seemed um judgment like one about a huge it almost seemed like a plague of bugs mm -hmm. um uh which i won't get into now because we might be here in an, an hour <laughs> more just on that maybe another time um but i also recently had uh, another one where there was this some sort of gas that was released behind me and I was running and it was like on the heels. And, and that's the only part of the dream I remember. So it just made me kind of wondering, hey, the enemy may have his plans mm -hmm. and he may be trying to take advantage of this, but we have to remember God is good like all the time. Yeah. And it took me a long time to remember that. So if the, if the, mm -hmm. the viewers can just remember God is always good, you have to, have to, have to receive this deep in your spirit and and receive it as lens and just you know if you have to pretend to put a glasses on and always view everything with through the lens of god is always good mm -hmm. because if you do then you will be able to to um learn his nature and abide in that and not fall prey to seeing things in a negative death doom and gloom um way yes. uh so just a few things I wanted to share, and I, I know there's so much to, to share regarding the, the eclipse of something that I, I feel um, I'm honored. I feel like I haven't heard anyone else yet uh, share is when the Lord talks about when the Lord shows that there's going to be an X over America. Mm -hmm. I kept hearing like Mark, Mark, like he's like he's marking America. And I'm thinking uh -huh. everybody's talking about it in a negative way, Lord. And I'm thinking, no, <laughs> it can't be that way anymore because you're always good. And then the Lord quickened me. There is a couple of places in the Bible where the Lord marked people. And so I started looking. And um, one of those places, we'll, we'll begin with the first one, go in order here, it was in Genesis. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter 4, uh, the eclipse is the fourth month. So the Lord loves numbers, mm -hmm. so he's playing around fours again. <laughs> and the Lord says to, uh, the Lord says about Cain, of course, Cain killed Abel. The Lord says, but the Lord said to him, not so. If anyone kills, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. Wow. So the Lord put a mark to preserve. Mm. I thought that was very yeah. interesting. Like, okay, that preserve. Is. I just, I'll we just mention to you, when I clicked on mm -hmm. to Zoom to open it up, I looked at my computer and it was 444. <laughs> lovely love those numbers <laughs> and 444 to me have ha, at least in my life have spoken of being set apart so that kind of goes in with preservation as you say that that reminds me is preservation <laughs> over us uh, so that scripture genesis 4 is the first one um there's a couple other ones of course the one we should know very well is from exodus and this is interestingly Exodus chapter 12. And uh, 12, the number of judgment and and whatnot. But in the midst of that judgment, the Lord says this, verse 13, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Mm -hmm. So the Lord was preserving his people. It may not have been an X or whatnot, but he still marked them with the blood. In that time, it was the blood of, of a lamb. And so the mm -hmm. Lord was was able to judge the wicked and yet preserve his people in Goshen. And they were untouched. So That's again, we, we start to, we, you know, we <clears throat> need the reminder of the bread. Now, there's another one which uh, may not be too well remembered, I suppose. Um, I'm surprised I remembered it. But it is in... Where did I have it, Lord? 
It is in, let me just look it in my Bible here, Ezekiel chapter 9. Oh, sorry, now earlier I said 12. 12 is for government. I think I said judgment. Um, unless it can mean judgment also, I'm not sure. But Ezekiel chapter 9, one of the uh, oddest scriptures, but here it says, and I'm just going to read a few verses. Chapter 9, verse 1. Then the Lord thundered, bring on the men appointed to punish the city. Tell them to bring their weapons with them. Six men soon appeared from the upper gate that faces the north, each carrying a battle club in his hand. One of them was dressed in linen and carried a writer's case strapped to his side. They all went into the temple court courtyard and stood beside the bronze altar. Let me skip down to verse 5. <clears throat> then I heard the Lord say to the other men, Follow him through the city and kill everyone whose forehead is not marked. Show no mercy. Have no pity. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women and little children. But do not touch anyone with the mark. Emphasis on that, that part. Begin your task right here at the temple. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Wow. So they began killing the 70 leaders. The Lord has been talking a lot about leaders and wow. removing uh, leaders and so forth, cor uh, corrupt leaders. The Lord says, verse 7, defile the temple, the Lord commanded. Fill its courtyards with the bodies of those you kill. Go. So they went throughout the city and did as they were told. And it goes on, and I think it's 11 verses, but then at the very end, then the man in the linen clothing carried the right who carried the writer's case, reported back and said, I have finished the work you gave me to do. So obviously, that as I'm reading that, I'm thinking, oh, man, this sounds really doom and gloom. I was like, oh, <laughs> they don't hang me. <laughs> I'm reading this. But the point in that part is the, the theme of the Lord marking his yes. and preserving them at the same time, yeah. at the same time exacting judgment. Yeah. And uh, the last one is from Revelation. Before you share and, that last one, Brian, just let sure. me um, remark that my journal entry for today was clean up on aisle seven. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about oh. clean up in the church. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And you did bring, bring you... confirmation from the Lord. Oh, go for it, John. Um, <clears throat> I'm working on a dream. Um, the longest dream that I've worked on yet. And um, it contains, it's called the five giants dream and it contains battle scenes with five distinct giants. And each of the Ecclesia warriors has a battle ax. And <clears throat> wow. I've been doing a deep dive into scripture related to battle axes. Um, when you said Mark, I thought of this verse immediately because in most, in other versions, they don't have a club, they have a battle ax. And so they have a person that's a scribe that has a book um, that would probably be called a watchman's or a watcher's journal. Wow. Because it huh. describes earlier in the chapter that these are holy watchers from heaven and there's seven of them six of them have battle axes and one of them has a pen and a book wow. and they take the pen and they mark and it says everybody who weeps for the sin of the city and mm -hmm. everybody else they go through and they kill with a battle axe wow. axe as an x like across the country wow wow, wow. That's and powerful. the whole watcher thing the watcher journal, the whole mm -hmm. pen thing. I mean, I just related to Diana Larkin mm -hmm. and even the Rolodex. It's so interesting how Ax and Rolodex all have X in them. <laughs> like <laughs> X marks the spot kind of a thing. What do you know? Yes. <laughs> Oof. That's awesome. We might oh, need to my gosh. another show. Okay, so the last thing. I'm just saying, I got to run. Unfortunately. Okay. Oh, but we might need to. I, I, I would love to sit and, and even unpack this further because yeah. now it's really touching on some things that I've been studying for a while. Wow. Um, 
Well, we appreciate the time that you gave us tonight. That was a a great blessing. Absolutely. And a great setup by the Lord. (laughs) Yeah, it's so good to be with you guys. It's always good to spend time with you guys. So thanks. Amen. Thanks for coming (laughs) on. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, me too. A powerful dream. Very, very powerful and a powerful message for both of you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thanks for having a dream for me, Brian. Gee. (laughs) (laughs) Very funny. Have a good rest of your evening, John. Thanks. Again, I hate to duck out so quick, but love y'all. And it's always great to spend time with you. Okay. (laughs) We'll see you soon again. Yeah. All right. We'll talk soon. Love you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Take care. That was awesome, Brian. Awesome. All right, let's get to your revelation. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So this one is um uh I have two more, two more verses. The Lord reminded me of one more extra today. But this will be the fourth one where the Lord marks, which I just found is fascinating. Number and four. He pointed out huh? the word mark itself. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, the Lord just gave me that. I didn't have that. And the word mark has four letters, which I thought was interesting. I'm like, okay, oh. yes. We're in 2024 and the eclipse is on the fourth month again. So the Lord's just having a blast. <laughs> so this next one, Revelation chapter 7. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good, Lord. Okay. Don't let me forget that. Um, Okay. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through, I'll go through 4. Then, John speaking, then I saw four angels, okay, standing at the four corners of the earth, okay, holding back the four winds. Oh, Lord. Four winds. (laughs) I had not read this, so I didn't realize all these fours were in here already. So I'm just, excuse me while I'm just amazed at the Lord here. (laughs) Holding back the four winds from blowing upon the earth. Not a leaf rustled in the trees, and the sea became as smooth as glass. And I saw another angel coming from the east, carrying the seal of the living God. And he shouted to those four angels who had been given power to injure land and sea. Wait, this is verse three, wait, don't hurt the land or the sea or the trees until we have placed the seal of God on the foreheads of his servants. Mm -hmm. And then I heard how many were marked with the seal of God. There were 144,000 who were sealed from all the tribes of Israel. Thought I was getting something there. Um, So once again, the Lord sealing his people for protection. Mm -hmm. So the way the Lord is is having me view this eclipse, the fact that it's making an X. And I I know it makes an Aleph if you if you count the October 2023 eclipse. Um, So I'll just let Amanda Grace talk about that because she did talk about it already. (laughs) So this is the revelation Mm -hmm. I got on this regarding the X that the Lord is marking it, but not for destruction of the entire land and the people but rather as a sign of of a like a, a another major shift that i can't really grasp but it's still really new I, I was sitting still meditating today and he something else came to me and i was like um, i was like what are you talking about lord and then i looked it up and and i'll share that in a bit i'm like oh my gosh that, that that's amazing so i feel like the x is yes x mark, marks the spot but the lord's saying he's performing a marking he's marking america yes obviously america is the one dealing with this the craziness of the wannabe person in charge and the so-called vp and all that mess um but let me just jump to one more the lord reminded me which is malachi chapter 3 and i have this scripture from uh, chapter 3 verse 16 through 18 so interesting, it begins at 316, which again is the love of God, John 316. Yes. But here in Malachi, the Lord says this, to those who feared the Lord, to those who fear the Lord, they spoke mm-hmm. to one another and the Lord listened yeah. and he heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord. 
and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them. As a man spares his own son who serves him, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. Oof. So wow, I just feel like that Brian. goes in with the separation that the Lord is doing in, in the church yes. and in whether it's the prophetic as well or just the church in general, light and darkness. There's just so many different threads. But again, what God has been emphasizing mm -hmm. is like he's marking America. Mm -hmm. And and it could be why John is not feeling anything because we're, we're, when we're in him, we there's nothing to fear. Yeah, You know, I, I don't fear like, Something's going to come and knock my house. You know, there's no yeah. fear because we are in the Lord. But yet he's making us aware and he may show us things that are going to happen. And of course, mm -hmm. we have to pray. And we also have to realize God is a just God. Mm -hmm. You know, he's capable of performing judgment and preserving his people as as we've seen. So hopefully those scriptures are going to help the, uh, the saints. And just briefly to jump over to what I received few hours ago which I haven't wrapped my head but hopefully the lord will give you revelation as i'm chatting about it <laughs> i was sitting still and i was like all right lord i'm gonna meditate and i'm just like show me about the eclipse and again i'm still practicing different ways of meditation so i'm sitting still mm -hmm. and i was just praying in tongues within me praying in tongues and and all of a sudden after a few minutes i i heard a statement something to the effect of a great annular transition or annual transition, one of those words. Hmm. And so I was, I was pondering and I was like, okay, transition, I can understand, you know, the eclipse, you know, it could be like a, a marking, a shifting something. Okay. But annular, like Lord, it's April. It's like not, not December 31st, it's not January 1st. It's not September, you know, Rosh Hashanah. And then I was thinking, hmm. and this thought came to my mind. April 8th, the eclipse, what day, what number, um, what day is that from January 1st to April 8th? So I did the math in my head and it's the 99th day no. of the year. I'm thinking no. 99. So then the next day would be hundred. I'm like, okay, okay. And I'm like, God, I still don't understand. And it just made me think like there are bowls in heaven with the prayers of the saints. And there's a scripture in Genesis where the Lord says the cup of the, uh, I think it's the Amalekites has not yet been full. The cup of iniquity before he pours out, it's like there's a level of grace and measure and so forth. And I'm thinking, okay. Lord, could this 99 be speaking to something of that nature? Because mm -hmm. that would be like definitely a tipping point, a huge change. So maybe yeah. that makes sense. A great annual transition. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, but what's the annual about? And then he reminded me, I heard somebody say something about Nisan. Nisan, I'm like, all right, I know that's a, a Hebrew month. Let me look this up. Yeah. Nisan. Well, uh -huh. the first of Nisan, this is what I found. It's referred to as the biblical new year. The first of Nisan this year, 5784, begins on April 8th. No. Into the ninth. And, it's, and it says, it references Exodus chapter 2, sorry, chapter 12 verse 2 so 12 times 2 is oh 24 and then it says here in, in this uh screenshot i took significance nissan one is the biblical new year's day i'm like okay that's where the annual comes in yes. oh my gosh it says the start of the month of the exodus from egypt and the oh beginning of the jewish national history wow and it is also the first month used for counting the festivals, uh, referred to as the Moedim, of the Hebrew calendar and for reckoning the years of the reign of the king of Israel. So on the second part, I don't, I didn't get to chew on that too much, <laughs> but I just thought it was like, oh my gosh. So again, absolutely have no idea, if, you know, if there is, the Lord is saying an event is going to happen other than the eclipse itself. At the time, we know many times the Lord, it could be days after that something happened. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm wondering, I mean, there's other things we could tie in, but I, I don't want to bring too much in at the table. Um, <laughs> but but I, I feel like there's going to be a significant shift of sorts. And especially okay. if we're in tune and we're like, Lord, what are you showing? Then we're going to connect yeah. with his willingness to release the revelation. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I yeah, that, kind of that is pretty mind blowing that that's the first of Nissan on April 8th. That's like, whoa, that's um, stunning because that's the start of the Exodus, you know? Yes, uh, yes. The way yeah. you ordered it is like, and wow. I don't know that we'll see anything happen that day. We could of significance, but mm -hmm. it's a, a marker means this is where it starts. And uh, yes. so I think when we look back, we'll say, oh, yeah, it started that day. This great oh, deliverance. Good. Yeah. This great sweeping the land of evil. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's it's a great reminder that Passover is 14 days after the eclipse. Yes. And and so, you know, that in itself is interesting. Obviously, we will, like Amanda Grace says, you know, keep an eye out. The Lord may not be saying what or when, but obviously he does things uh, in such seasons. Not only that, we, we know that between now and um, the next, election is going to be intense um and then even beyond that because after god yeah. wins because mm -hmm. that's what he has planned and so we agree and we align with him um there's going to be kicking and screaming by the enemy but he's still going to have to go because god has promised yeah. it and so it's just yeah. it's just um it's, it's just so much i'm trying <laughs> to wrap my head to remember everything yeah that's going on and uh, it's so interesting also to awesome. to hear that it's believed that in the time of Jonah, that there was an eclipse that caused the people to repent. Because other than that, why why so drastic of a change? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I have a little note here that I, I wrote. Um, it says, a total solar eclipse over Nineveh in northern Iraq on June 15th, 763 B.C., fits the time frame for the life and career of Jonah. A mm -hmm. seriologist, Donald Wiseman, a former curator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. He argues pers persuasively that this eclipse would help explain the dramatic reaction to Jonah's preaching. So mm -hmm. yes, we know that there's going to be a line of Nineveh that's crossing over mm -hmm. again, but that shouldn't make us afraid especially mm -hmm. if we're right to, with the Lord. And if we're not, well, then let's get right with the Lord. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> the Lord is lovingly mm -hmm. letting us know. I also think yes. it's interesting that we're just a few weeks away and he just recently spoke to Wanda Alger about this. Mm -hmm. And she specifically mentioned she wasn't seeking or hearing anything, but yeah. then God spoke. And I guess you, you can let me know about how uh, from your end, but it seemed almost similar to Wanda to where, he hadn't heard anything, and then he just spoke. And so I almost feel like he, he's, he's telling us, hey, pay attention. Maybe not, don't believe the hype of the world and maybe those who are mm -hmm. guessing and just playing around with numbers, mm -hmm. but rather with his wisdom, let me, you know, let me show you what I'm saying and so forth. Yeah. So, well, actually that morning, I, I usually when I sit with the father, I want to know what's on his heart. And that's what I want to deliver to the people. So that morning, I was just asking him to speak to me about the eclipse. I just wanted some clarity, but it was, I thought it was just for me. But then after okay. he got done speaking this word, I realized, no, this, he wants me to share this with everyone, um, which it surprised me, you know, because that's not usually how it goes. But um, yeah. he used my seeking to uh, speak a word. And this really uh, confirms what you heard because he it's the eclipse from dark to light. You know, it's not mm. going to be all darkness. It's dark to light. Um, and he just said the eclipse on April 8th is a marker in time for this battle of dark to light over your nation. So um, that really confirms what you heard. 
Awesome. Yes. Oh, that that really did confirm. Um, that that reminds me also of the uh, when did I have this vision? The vision I had of the dominoes falling. Oh yes. Um, I don't know if that was late December or or early, but I look. I thought back to that and I was like, oh my gosh, like wow, the Lord is is definitely doing something, and you know, I may not have the whole understanding. But let me see if I can pull it up. Okay. I don't think it's the exact one, but um, let's see if this will even show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, oops. Sorry okay. about the ring light, people. Yeah. But if you can just imagine <laughs> the, the dominoes, the, basically the dominoes, the hand, and the 2024 above it. So just visualize mm -hmm. that. Um, so I was sitting still meditating and I just had this vision unexpectedly. And I saw the dominoes first. Then I saw a hand appear, which reminds me of the book of Daniel when the hand appeared to write the wall. Like that's the only thing I can liken it to. And the, the hand literally just went like this. And it knocked over the first domino, which was formed in a cyclical fashion. And it's just like, I just knew that the dominoes in the uh -huh. circular fashion represented the, the year 2024. And they okay. began to fall. And just about before they got to the halfway mark, uh, I don't want to say they stopped, but it's like the vision ended. So I didn't really mm. see it go fall past that. Okay. And when, when I drew this, um, let me turn this slide off here. When I drew this, or I didn't draw it, but when I found this graphic, I thought to myself, sorry, there's a little bit of delay here. Um, yeah. It looked like right at the top where the white line would divide the middle of the year, June and July. And I was like, okay, well, it seemed like the vision stopped. If I had to, you know, estimate, it was about around April when, uh, if they were representing months, where the dominoes, mm. where the vision ended. It's almost like the Lord is saying he's okay. starting something and then something significant around that time. And mm. I don't think at that time I remember it about the eclipse, but it just came to yeah. mind recently. And I said, wow, well, it's, it's yeah. something God is doing, but. Uh, it is. That's pretty significant. Wow. I would love to see those dominoes, dominoes start falling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Well, anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, well, um, the I think the only thing that only other thing that comes to mind, which uh, of course I'm sure you're not excited unless you love bugs, <laughs> but the cicadas. <laughs> apparently, two types oh, of yeah. cicadas are supposed to, uh, at the end of this month, March into April, is supposed to come forth from the ground. Which again, which even that is a little odd to me, but God knows what He's doing. <laughs> And apparently there's supposed to be a cicada invasion. And uh, I guess the people can look it up. But if you're in the USA, it's those states where they're supposed to see okay. some cicadas, one to two different versions. And again, I'm not saying God's going to bring plagues or anything, but it's just yeah. a little interesting because they it's say these two, yeah, these two broods, apparently, that's what they call it. These two broods of cicadas have not been seen together since uh 221 years ago wow so they said apparently there are different broods so that's why we might yeah. see them every couple of years but the next time they will show up will be 221 years from now wow so it's just very interesting that yeah. that, that is happening and you know the the lord uh, has taught through troy brewer and others that solar eclipses are signs in the heavens that the lord uses to speak to the nations mm. to the world and yeah. so we should pay attention you know the lord even tells us he he set up those signs uh in the heavens um where's that scripture genesis chapter 1 verse 14 he says god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs for seasons for days and for years so god is obviously speaking yeah. and so we we should uh seek him on what he's saying 
and not just assume x means judgment and right you know the end um so <laughs> that well, that's what i you. felt led what do you think well i totally agree with that uh the i think that there is going to be a judgment of the evil that has tried to kill us and control us i do think that is coming down but i believe god's people are in goshen and they will be protected and actually prospered uh, the wealth transfer happened yeah. during that whole period of the plagues and destroying um, egypt um, that's when the wealth got transferred so interesting yes <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> um wow yeah well, well thank you so much else? Brian. well i think i think i'm good if you're good um yeah i think this, i'm good oh my goodness this has been a full and amazing uh time and um i can't believe that you had a dream for me <laughs> <laughs> that is yes. really impacting um and I think for your life, too, it's very impacting. Because uh, Cindy Jacobs was talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely an honor. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this interview with John Redenbow and Brian Palencia. And if you look in the description box uh, of this video, you will find how to um, reach Brian his YouTube channel. Uh, he uh, has an amazing channel. You want to check it out. So, and John's information will, will be there as well. So thanks so much for joining us. And until we meet again, may you be blessed with dreams, with his glory and with his great peace. Bye for now. <laughs>